changing focus to football now on the Sportsmax Zone. Match Week 7 gets underway this weekend and these are the fixtures. So we have Lime Hall playing Bear United, Dunby holding up against Malines United, Montego Bay United play Mount Pleasant, Waterhouse face Humble Lion, Portmore will be seeing Tivoli Gardens. Well, with us this afternoon to give a rundown of the season so far and preview the fixtures is our in-house football analyst, Lishi Williams. Good afternoon, Lishi. Welcome good to the set. Good afternoon. Lovely to be here as per usual. All right. So I'll start by questioning, questioning you. So you'll have an easy start. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about the weekend and which of the matches are we to look forward to. I just had on the screen, you know, the exciting matchups. Which one you think will be the most exciting of them all? Well, for me, I think, well, at least I think the matchup that I'm looking forward to the most would be on Monday, the Portmore United versus Tivoli. I think both of these teams are looking likely or one of the likely bunch to try and get to the top of the mountain in, in terms of the, the bunch that are chasing Mount Pleasant. So I think Portmore, they, they won the link up last year. They had flashes. They didn't make the players, but they had flashes. They've retained a few of their players. Yes, the last players like Lamar Walker, but I think that they've recruited well, replaced him well with Martin Davis. And I, I do think that they have the makings and the coachings of a really good team. So they're a team I'm really looking forward to this season. And Tivoli Gardens, I can't heap enough praise on them and Jerome Waite. I think the job that he has done so far in terms of the difference in stylistic play that they have changed in addition to the quality with basically the same squad from last season, I think it's really brilliant what he's doing over there. So that's a match I'm definitely looking forward to this weekend. Yeah, I want you to talk to us a little bit about Martin Davis because I remember him as a youth player with so much promise um, and so much expected of him, had a stint um, in Spain as well during his youth days. Um, saw him on Wednesday, I think it was, um, with a beautiful play, getting the ball to the byline and, and, and getting the cross inside, which resulted in a goal. Your own thoughts on his overall development and what he's brought to this Portmore United setup? Well, I mean, his development, you know, unfortunately, he didn't, or he, so far, he hasn't reached the heights that his talent, I think, would meet. Like, his talent, you'd expect him to get so much further than he's gone so far. But with that being said, I still think that he's played in some good places to develop his career. You mentioned Spain when he was in Europe, otherwise, apart from that. And he's a really talented footballer. That's something that's never going to fade, in my opinion. And I think he brings a lot, especially, I mentioned the fact that they lost Lamar Walker. Lamar Walker, if we cast our minds back to the Link Cup final, he was the man of the match of that game. He was really good dictating things from deep, but also being really penetrative in an attacking sense. Martin Davis, I don't think he's going to give them that deep build-up threat, but in terms of being penetrative attacking-wise, there are very few players I think that Portmore could have brought in to approximate what Lamar Walker could do, and I think that this Portmore setup with how they play with three narrow forwards, he's going to be really close to Siobhan Walsh, really close to Alex Marshall, players that are have a similar level of talent to him. I think that's going to do his form in the Jamaica Premier League a world of good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tivoli lost to Mount Pleasant yesterday. They would not feel too hard done by that result because Mount Pleasant has been on fire this season. What would they need to do differently from that loss in order to ensure that they pick up all points on the weekend? I think it's tough to, to criticize them over the loss that they would lose against Mount Pleasant because, as you mentioned, Mount Pleasant have been flying. They're the best team in the country so far by a, really a landslide. So, Tivoli, they're an emerging team. I, I think that by time, if health permitting, no injuries permitting, I think if Tivoli were to continue on this trajectory, there's no doubt in my mind they're a semi-final team at minimum with just the squad that they have. And I'm hearing that they have players to come in, changes to be made, but just development of the coaching, the familiarity of what they're trying to do, what... Um, their coach is trying to do as well. I think that Tivoli just need to continue going, rolling with the punches. And I think generally they'll get better and better. And then over time, their project will go boom, as, as my gaffer said, Mikel Arteta. But I, I, I do think that Tivoli have the squad, they have the capabilities, and I do think that they'll get better. But in relation to this Portmore game, Tivoli versus Portmore, I'm sure um, Ricardo especially would know. When I was growing up in probably the mid-2000s, that went... You're that still I, growing up, by the way. Go ahead, Roger. <laughs> when I was growing up, when I was around six, seven, eight, because I know Ricardo is an old boy, but as a young man myself, yes. when I was growing up, 
I, I, I was going to Prison Oval. I was going to National Stadium. I was going to Fernita Park. I was going to Edward Siaga Sports Complex because this was the game that so often the end around finals, the JP the, at the time, the, well, it's Real Nephew now again, so I can say it. The Real Nephew Premier League finals, this game was so important in the grand scheme of things. So this is one of those games where it's like an El Clasico. I, I, I know that there's an actual El Clasico with Arnett and Waterhouse, but to me, this is the significance that it would play. If Arnett Waterhouse is the El Clasico, this is the Milan Derby, how, how big of a game it is. This is not a game that will lose its prestige, so I'm looking forward to a really tight encounter, no matter what the talent levels may, the form of the teams, this game is always going to be an exciting one, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. That's why it's my matchup of the weekend. Yeah, I want your assessment of... Tivoli Gardens under Jerome Waite in comparison to the Tivoli teams, the Tivoli setups that we have seen in more recent seasons? Well, I think it's just their, the, the profile of players that were within the squad just fit Jerome Waite perfectly. And it's not something that I saw when, as soon as I saw Jerome Waite get a point. I'm like, yes, this project is going to be really good. But now when I watch them play, I realize that what he's trying to accomplish and the positions that he has the players in, it's perfect for them. So, for instance, Penny Cook, he has him playing, yes, he's playing in the a back three also, but in terms of what he he try, he pushes him up into midfield, similar to what we see with John Stones at Manchester City, So and his engine allows him to do that. Howard Morris, playing him just off of the strike at the tip of a midfield three diamond, that works out brilliantly. And then you talk about Justin Dunn, six goals in the Premier League this season. He was playing right wing back at times last year, and now he's playing in a pseudo right wing sometimes a lot of rotation in their front three so he will be pick up striking positions you, you see making penetrative runs from deep that's what he's really good at and his finishing ability so I think what Jerome Waite identified immediately is the type of profile that he has in the squad and he has built a system around them perfectly and this team is really flying and that's why I said I have a lot of confidence in them not only I don't think it's just a flash in the pan I think that when the season is over this team if injuries, injuries withstanding, this team should be minimum in the semi-finals just based off their talent level, the level of their coaching, and just their application in games as well. So this is a, real, this is a team that I'm really excited about going forward. Yeah. Has Jerome found a statistician yet? No, not, not as yet, but... Um, is he still doing the stats from the stands? No, he, he's gone back. Uh, maybe, maybe he was just um, putting it out there for anyone who wants to join. Uh, I personally can't do it. Yeah. Um, Why not? I, I know that you wouldn't want me to leave Sports Max personally. I, I so. will let you go on a loan. <laughs> on a loan? Yeah. How, how long a have a loan with Aki? A loan deal. A season long deal. Season long deal? You couldn't be, with, you couldn't be without me for Salah Ricardo. Mm. Could you do it? I, you, you could. <sighs> Mariah? I'm leaving y'all to have your bromance <laughs> on that side, and I'm just in my little corner. But I do want to ask you, though, about Malines United. Yeah. They have not got a win this entire season. They played Don Beholden on the weekend. Are we expecting the results to, of course, change? These are two teams that I think are really similar, actually. Um, two teams that want to play attacking football, have good attacking players, yes, but defensively, they just haven't been showing out this season, especially more lines from last season. Actually, they're one of the worst defences in the Premier League. And Alex Thomas is a coach that I really respect. I think that he's a really good manager. He has quality players at his disposal as well, but I'm just not, defensively just has not been clicking. They were always liable to collect, uh, as my friends would say, collect a bag in at certain points of last season. We saw Arnett give them five. They collect a lot of big scores as well. I just think defensively their application isn't good enough most of the time. And I think they need to work on that. They haven't worked on that coming into this season. But in terms of Dumbo holding, although I do think that Dumbo holding are struggling right now, I think they're going to get better. They have one of the best coaches in the island, for goodness sake, in Lenny Hyde. And they have quality players as well. So I think they'll get better. But Molines United, I think they have to button down hatches and try to see if they can get a result this weekend. Because if they're not going to get it this weekend, pressure will just continue to build and build and build. And the last thing I would want is someone like Alex Thomas, a, a young, good coach like that, to get sacked. And then Molines has to reset. And then who knows, even fall into a relegation scrap like they're in right now. So I think they need to start getting some results going. Dumbo holding, I think, are under less pressure. But let's see how they perform this weekend. Yeah, we spoke about it at the top of the show. Montego Bay United, Mount Pleasant. That game originally scheduled for 7.30 p.m. on Monday at the Montego Bay Sports Complex at Catherine Hall. However, renovations taking place at that venue and the match time had to be changed. Now, Montego Bay United wanted the match to be played on Sunday at 3 p.m. 
at Westport Park. Understandably so, because Sunday at 3 p.m. would be a better time for fans to come out and support. However, the match remains on Monday. It will be played at 3 p.m. Um, at Westport Park. And a large part of the reason for that, there are no lights at Westport Park. So it has to be a day game. The management of Montego Bay United have come out to say they are disappointed that the request to have the game played on Sunday was not granted. Um, and as I said at the top of the show, um, it, it seems like a no-brainer from the Montego Bay United standpoint, but there is also another standpoint to be considered, and that is the Mount Pleasant standpoint, because Mount Pleasant would have planned and prepared for a game on Monday. And I think the rules are pretty clear that to have a change in a situation like this, then you need both teams to submit the request and you need both teams to agree. In this case, I suspect that Mount Pleasant would not have agreed, understandably so from their standpoint, because if you're preparing for a Monday game and all of a sudden, a few days before you hear that it's going to be on Sunday, that's not something you would necessarily agree with. I don't know, Lejay, if that makes this contest or adds some amount of intensity to this contest on Monday, um, the developments leading in. Yeah, I think it may. Um, especially there's going to be no fans, less people to, to view. So maybe the, the Mobe people are saying, OK, let's just go out and be physical as we may. The crowd isn't going to get on top of us. So be the case. But Montego Bay United, they've been struggling again this season. They've brought in some players of Brazilian heritage to go along with their Brazilian coach. But it hasn't quite gone too well for them. They had a really good game over the weekend, um, Humberland again, against Humberland. And it was a close game. But... This Mount Pleasant unit, they're playing some liquid stuff right now. They have easily the best squad on paper. And I, I'm talking about not only their defence. We see how their attack is going with Kimoni, Bailey, Devante, Campbell, Okwasa Chung. But I'm a midfield man. Yeah. I'm an engine room man. So when I see a midfield three coming to, uh, against a team, and that midfield three is Guthrie, yeah. Demario Phillips. And then on top of that, they're going to add Ramon Howell, one of the another one of the best midfielders in the league. That midfield alone is a title winning midfield. So good luck to the rest of the JPL, but you're going to have a warm time dethroning Mount Pleasant this season. Yeah, very much the case. And quickly, I want you to talk about Kimone Bailey, who has been in fantastic form, four goals in five matches this campaign. Um, what has led to this success that we didn't see, for example, when he was at Dun Beholden? Uh, <laughs> You, know, you said quickly, so I'm not going to get too much into it. But yeah. tactically, there is a shift in terms of when you think about Trevante Stewart. It's similar to what you see. Take Man City, for example. Early in Holland, everything is funneled into him as a target man. But when they're playing with a false nine, you see the wingers getting more involved. You had Sterling scoring 20 at goals. When there, it's a more nimble striker like Acosta Chung is, there's going to be more help on the wing, more... There's, there's a lot more facets to the attack, and I think that's what's causing the, the wingers to get more involved. It's not only Kimoni Bailey, who has been fantastic this season, but Devante Campbell on the left, I think, has been just as good, just hasn't scored as many goals. He has his assists, however. But yeah, I think because of the, the, the shift in type of striker that they're using, that's what's causing the wingers to really explode this season so far. Yeah, and quickly again, even quicker than the last time, um, we showed that graphic at the top of the segment with only five matches scheduled for this round. They are a few teams who will not be involved. Yeah, Cavalier, um, Cavalier will be taking part, of course, in the Cavalier and Harborview will be taking part in the Caribbean Cup. Harborview have their third place matches. Cavalier have the final um, coming up. It's a two-legged affair. So um, good luck to both of those teams. Uh, I would love to see Cavalier bring it home because they have been absolutely fantastic in that tournament. Um, Shanil Thomas, the top scorer. So hopefully they, they can bring home the trophy for Jamaica. Yeah, yeah DJ Williams, thank, thank you very you. much for joining us on the Sports Rank Zone with your expert analysis. And we'll discuss <laughs> that one-year loan deal. Let's take a break. <laughs>